Hey, it's Friday, and uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. Take five with Pastor Loff. Let's get started. We're in Psalm chapter 27. We read it yesterday, but we really didn't go anywhere with it. Today, uh, we're going to look a little differently at it. So let's start in verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I love the confidence of David. And it should be the confidence of each and every one of us as well. The Lord is my light. He's my salvation. He's my strength. I am not going to fear. I trust him. It doesn't mean that, uh, uh, you know, that there's no concern. It, it means that I'm not going to live a life in fear. Nothing's worse than having a life that's filled with fear where you are basically immobilized from doing anything of any value at all. Uh, some people are so filled with fear, they can't even uh, get into life. They can't even live their life. David is saying, listen, Lord, because of who you are to me, I'm not afraid. Verse 2. When the wicked came up against me, or came against me to eat my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. He's seen this happen already. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Because of his faith in the Lord, I'm not going to fear. I know who you are, Lord, to me. I'm not going to fear. Verse 2, he says, and I've seen the wicked come against me, and I've seen the Lord defeat them. Um, that experience, experience typically builds faith, builds hope, builds trust. And so therefore, he says, <coughs> excuse me, because, because of who I know the Lord is, I will not fear. Even when I've seen enemies come against me, they've stumbled and fell. fell. Verse 3, so I know that though an army comes against me. It might be a thousand men, ten thousand men. My heart shall not fear. Though war rises against me, in this I will be confident. Even in that moment, I will have confidence. Why? Because I know who the Lord is to me. Verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing. What one thing do you want from the Lord? You see, a lot of us, as Christians, even will say, you know, <clears throat> one thing, I, I, money would help. I'd like to have some money. And, and you know, money does answer things. One thing I'd like to have, you know, one wish, I'd like to have money or uh, popularity or fame or uh, a great job or my family to be saved. Uh, none of those things in and of themselves are necessarily wrong. But David said, there's one thing I'm desiring of the Lord. One thing that I'm seeking from him that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. <clears throat> David was just flat out crazy about the presence of God. He was flat out flipped over being where Father was. He said, man, that is the one thing I want. He realized that once he slips from this life, he enters into a life where to be present with the Lord is, that's, that's all we have to look forward to. I know that some people get really funny over this. <clears throat> some people don't like spending time in church. They don't like, you know, the worship services. Maybe we stand forever or we sing a million songs or whatever. How comfortable are you going to be in heaven? How comfortable are you going to be? Oh, then, you know, then God will be there. 
Wow. Read scripture. When you start praising him, he's there. The Bible even goes further. It says that he's in you. If you're a believer, he's in you. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. In church, he is showing up. He has shown up. Seek to dwell in his presence, to behold his beauty, and to spend time with him. Make that your priority in life. And my friend, things will change for you. I want to thank you for taking time with me every day. I appreciate it. Um, again, I won't see, won't see you till Monday, but we'll pick up where I left off here. And um, have a fantastic day today. Enjoy your weekend. Spend some time with family. Enjoy some days off. And uh, go and seek the Lord in corporate worship somewhere. God bless you. Bye-bye.